But Jeff, first of all, I want to thank you for, you know, hum humbly coming here. Thank you, Jack. And giving me your yeah, time. Thank you. And, um, and uh, you know, I've rejoiced in, number one, my world's been in prison, and I'm glad you mentioned corrections today. Uh -huh. Not too many people even mention that word. Um, they say guards and all that kind of stuff, you know, we call them corrections officers. Um, and I started out in prison, that's where I, not as a prisoner. Of course. Um, but I tell people, um, I was born with a death sentence on me, uh -huh. and I was born condemned to hell. As so, was I. As you were too, yeah. Yep. Okay, so, and uh, we both thank the Lord for a yeah. great savior. And, um, but working in prison, I've always said you can't work long in prison before you realize almost 78% of the men are dads, yeah. and about 98% of the women are mothers. And then you start looking at the corrections officers. You start looking at every police department that's bringing people to your, to your building or sheriff's departments. And um, it was through corrections where my heart was broken for leadership and yeah. authority yeah. that God ordains to keep a peace. Right. And then, of course, it easily flowed over to the, uh, you know, the police themselves. And then I knew about Bob Vernon. Um, who was at the time, you know, assistant chief or dec uh, yeah, assistant chief of Los Angeles. And um, of course, Bob was, uh, if, uh, if you ever, did you know anything about Bob in your early days no. or no? Nothing at all. Mm -mm. So, you know, he was the kind of guy that, um, he's still living, he's uh, about almost 88, nine, no, he just turned 90, but uh, he actually had the uh, memorial service for Jack Webb, the famous, yeah. you know, dragnet. Yeah. And so, you know, Bob was in LA f for 38 years and um, his own story, um, written by um, focus on the family by him is uh, lessons from the firestorm uh -huh. and so but god we know god has used bob vernon as a uh, assistant chief of police of la to reach into 92 nations with the gospel of jesus christ in our country we have a, obviously a legal divide between military and law enforcement and um but through the work of point man um i've had a chance to meet people in the All military right. yeah uh, like one who's I'm looking at here, Michael Belton, you can't see him in the film, but Mike was a sentinel at Arlington and uh, a warrior in Afghanistan and Iraq and, um, and still at the Pentagon. And I see through, through Christ bringing us even into the world of law enforcement, military, uh, because leadership is leadership. Yeah. And particularly when it comes to those sworn to keep the peace. And um, as a, as a warrior yourself and a pastor, looking at, let's say, the times we're in right now, if you look at 2 Timothy 3, yeah. um, just give me a quick answer to how you would see, if you could speak to a police officer right now and just say, according to 2 Timothy 3, last days, perilous times, um, what would be your challenge to, let's say, law enforcement today? at this moment. Yeah, um, one of the big challenges to law enforcement is not only are you serving in a really difficult time, and let's just be honest, it's never been easy to be in law enforcement, um, but it perhaps has never been harder than it is now, and it's also not just difficult, but it's unpopular. Just because it's difficult, just because it's unpopular doesn't mean that it's not important. And what I want people to know is if it wasn't for you, the law enforcement officer, standing between evil people and the, the folks in your community, there is no limit to how bad, how, how terrible a society can become. You find examples of this over and over in the Bible where a society's evil has just gotten so bad that God said, that's it, I've got to, do, I've got to wipe them off or wash them off of the face of the earth in the, in the case of yep. a great flood. And I'll just say this to people that are watching this in societies that have some challenges, if it wasn't for you, that society may not, you know, may not be there, exist anymore. And I had a chance to see just how wicked people can be when there is no restraint, when the people have thrown off restraint, and when there's no law enforcement and no military. I saw that firsthand in Somalia. And without the law enforcement, I think any city, any country could easily become another Mogadishu, Somalia. Yeah, yeah. And I, I know for me, I've always said, the greatest prison ministry in the world is the effective work of a Bible-believing yeah. church in a high crime area. Yes. Because it's the same people, it's the same families. And, and one of the things that's broke, almost when the doors of the church normally close on a Sunday, not even on a Sunday night anymore, right. 
but when they close, they close for good for six days. And what I've learned in prison is we need Proverbs 1, wisdom cries in the gate of the city, mm -hmm. and she holds out her hand in the marketplace. And uh, Proverbs 24, 11, and 12 says, um, you know, when you see someone ready to perish and you do nothing to deliver them, knowing that your own soul is kept by God, don't you know that you'll have to give an account for yeah. that? And, and I really feel today this urgency of reaching those that are perishing right outside of our door right. in our red light district. Um, every, every county in America has a county prison. And, and I really feel for me in my life, Jeff, I've looked at the county prison and the state prisons and federal prisons, uh -huh. but the county prison where our, our neighbors live, the fathers of the little guys yeah. in our streets and their mothers. And my prayer has always been that God would break the heart yeah. of the church yeah. for those perishing outside their own door. Yeah. And um, frankly, after 52 years in corrections, I still feel that there's a failure there. And, and I just would ask you as a church planter um, in, in Georgia, That's is right. that correct? What's the name of the? Two Cities Church. Two Cities Church. And what's the name of the, is it Two Cities? Yeah, well, it's named after the book, The City of God by St. Augustine. Okay. That said, you and I as Christians, we belong to the city of God, but he's left us here in the city of man to make a difference. Get off of your hands and start making a difference in the city of man until he calls you home to the city of God. Amen. Amen. So here you are, church planner. Not, did you plant a church? Yes. Okay. And um, so, you know, I'm even thinking my... 42 year old son today, Joshua, who was here listening to you as, you know, 14 years older than him, um, encouraging him, yeah. you know, not, not to fight the war in, in a, let's say in a uniform, but at the whole armor of God, oh, yeah. to put on the whole right. armor of Absolutely. God. And, and that fight is very real. It's a spiritual war. Um, and I can tell you, frankly, the most discouraging thing I see as a dad watching a son in ministry is not the, tri the people he's trying to reach, but oftentimes it's the discouragement, once again, of those who will not pray, right. will not engage yeah. with him in that marketplace. And, um, and so I guess part of me is saying I rejoice that a man like you who took those, I guess my dad would have called them half tracks in World War II and in the bulge, but going in there with those uh, Humvees in Somalia. Here you are now in another war in the streets of America, yeah. uh, planning a church, um, bringing the gospel. And um, I guess in front of the people that might see this today to close us out, um, I'll make my last comment. You can make sure. yours. Yeah. Um, I just want to thank you, Jeff, for being a great father, a husband, and an encourager and being humble enough in your busy life to spend it with us today. So Jeff, you can say yeah. something thanks. to our people. And again, I thank God sure. for you and I'm gonna pray for you. Yeah, thanks so. Jack. Um, I agree with everything that you've just said about the church. I wanna take a half step back and examine the question, why didn't Jesus just take all of his believers to heaven with him the day that he left earth to go back to heaven? And it's obvious he gives them this great commission in Matthew 28. What the church's role is, and I cannot help but think of the church in terms of a military battle, God has placed the church behind enemy lines and his plan is to get his church into the streets and into the problem areas of the world. I want to say to pastors, I think you're missing it if you're measuring success in the church by how many people are coming into the doors. The real measure of success, as I read it, Luke chapter 10, when Jesus sends out the 70, Matthew 25, when Jesus says to his church, when you gave somebody a cup of cold water, when you helped them out when they were in need, when you visited them in the hospital or in prison, you were doing that to me. Pastors, your job is to get people out of the doors and into the streets. 
and the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in the United States will fail our country and fail King Jesus if we don't stop measuring success by how many people come in on a Sunday. We need to start measuring success by how many people go out Monday through Saturday and go make a difference. And by the way, that will change any society because you're changing society at the soul level. So I am privileged to be able to lead people that take very seriously the Great Commission. They're living it Monday through Saturday, not just hearing about it and then doing nothing with it on Sundays. I guess I'll just you making me think of a man named Job. Yeah. You know, the Bible, the Bible emphatically says he was the one man. God said it himself. He said, that's he my said righteous it. servant. He's my righteous servant. And he fears me more than anybody. And he hates evil more than anybody. Mm -hmm. And if you keep reading in Job, it actually says, I think it's in Job 29, Job describes, he says, I wish it was like the days of old, when I was eyes to the blind yeah, and feet to yeah, the lame. Yeah. And, and I, always, I always wondered, I said, when Job, when Job went down in his suffering, I really believe that that whole society around him Word, felt that, felt it. Felt that yeah, pain. Yeah. And I think that's the good question is if, if the Lord were to take us out today, would people even notice? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I think that's a, a real challenge. That's the question every Christian needs to ask themselves. And it's not will my family or will the people that go to church with me notice. Will the people of your society notice that you're not there when you're not there anymore? That is a powerful question. Amen. Let's close on that. I'm yeah, going to pray. Sure. Father, thank you for Jeff. And uh, thank you, Lord, for his life. We pray, Father, that you'd encourage him. And Father, I pray that you would continue to use him in mighty ways, Lord, not just in Georgia, but around the world for such a time as this. Bless, Lord, those in authority, those who know you, those who don't. We pray you touch hearts and break them for such a time as this. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.